Great, so here's a very fast, quick and dirty run through this field dimension tool. So I'll right click and select the field dimension tool and click anywhere to create the node. First thing you need to do is import the height map. I already have it imported previously, so I'll just use this recently used uh, file drop down list. And uh, if you don't see anything right away, just press F to frame all. The map resolution and height scale information needs to be the exact same as it is for your map. You'll find this information in the map XML. It's set to the very top, line 2 or something. And the height scale is in your i3D file. Either you can open that in a text editor or in GE, you can go to the, uh, let's see here, uh, click the terrain and then the terrain tab and right about here, height scale. Right, so um, we have that. Everything here is set up as it should. Close that tab and create our field shapes. There are two options here. You can either create your curve directly in Houdini, which is uh, very helpful, especially when you uh, have a satellite photo and uh, have that overlaid on your map and just can draw directly on the terrain based on the photo. Um, you can also import an external mask. Uh, let me just show how to create a curve first. So um, press tab, search for geometry, and uh, you can name it whatever. I'll just name it curve. Uh, double click to enter it. And from here, we will create a curve polygon node. So with this node, uh, we're going to just draw two fields or something. So press enter to start editing the curve. And uh, yeah, you can draw any shape you want. Prefer for preferably not too advanced because uh, that will um, lead to some interesting uh, uh, challenges later on. Right, so that's our curve. In the field dimension node, just press it to open this UI again. We can click and drag this curve node up here and uh, nothing really happens. And that's because we don't have the proper view mode here. So you have different view modes. Uh, I'll let you figure out how they uh, work on your own. I don't have to explain it, I think. Um, but here we have the field mask. We see it like it's a selection on the terrain. You even see that the corners are a little bit rounded as well. Um, just to add a little interesting realistic flair to it. Um, from here, we can process the height map. But before I do that, I want to show you the external mask as well. So just press the external mask and let's click this blue ribbon to hide that. Um, I have already drawn a shape here in Photoshop and I'll load this right now. So now the height map is back uh, because if there's nothing here, not, the system sort of breaks. But as soon as you have something here, it will show up again. Um, so these will do exactly the same as the curve you drew yourself. It will just mask the terrain and tell you, hey, this is where I want my field. So let's just uh, collapse these field shapes. Uh, tab and enter the terrain smoothing tab. And that's where all the magic happens, really. So I don't know if it's very easy to see this on this uh, video, but let's jump to process type map view. And nothing really happens at first, but if we increase this slider here, we can see that the terrain is uh, smooth so much that it looks like it's flattening the area where we want to have our fields. We can, um, we can exceed this uh, value. The, the slider stops at 100, but you can type like 200 if you like. And now we start to see that this is uh, not only flattening, but it's so, sort of raising the terrain as well. So you can tap, uh, type any number here, actually. So I'll just leave it at 100 for now. Um, and we can uh, uh, preview the field together with the processed height map. Now, the edges might 
be a little bit too much uh like you can actually drive off of this and uh there's no going back sort of so we could expand the mask so it takes this mask you see here and then expands it and then starts to blur from that point and in that way you will get a much better blend with the terrain so let's have a look up here for instance you can see it's uh it's almost like they um had a dig <laughs> from the terrain to to flatten this right doesn't look that good so what we can do is yeah first expand we can see that the area is expanded but we can also blur this a lot so it blends back into the terrain and looks more natural so let's view this uh, process type map with the field mask and now we can see that there's sort of a border that smooths from the field into the terrain surrounding terrain so with all that done we can have a look at the uh, process type map and visualize the field dimensions so this one will show you the actual uh, data that is exported as fbx let's see here there we go you can use the arrow keys arrow uh, left and right to browse through them or you can use the timeline bar down at the bottom and uh, this will have its uh, unique fbx file the um, the file will contain all of these spheres as one mesh item and there the pivot will be over here in the center and that's why we need the blender script the script will load all fbx files it can find in your export folder and run through every single one of these spheres and set the origin or pivot point in the center of each sphere thus they will get um a world space location so uh, you'll have some uh, you'll have the necessary data for modelizers script to run okay so I'm actually ready to export two sets of files first off is the height map file I want to export that to this folder right here I already have it earlier but I'll just overwrite that so I can click save the disk and the reason you want to export the height map is of course because you are flattening your adjusting the terrain to your fields the second one is uh, these fbx files so all the fields will be exported um, you need to let this string for the file name be unedited like it, it needs to be like this or else the export script will fail what you can do though is copy this uh, path or browse to somewhere you want to save it and just paste it in here there and now I'm ready to export the fields but before we start we can open the Windows task graph table and select the FBX export network uh, that's just to have an uh, idea of what's going on so if I click prepare for export Oh, perhaps it didn't want to work. I don't know. Let's uh, open this again. Might be a little bit buggy. Yeah. And now I see straight away that, oh, I made a mistake. I want to export four fields, actually. And there's only one here. So I forgot to set this slider to four fields. And now prepare for export will show that all four fields are ready to be exported. When you're ready, click the export all fields. Uh, button and you need to press the save uh, key here and once that's done you'll have all the fields as fbx files and we will um, bring this over to blender so i have blender open here it might look a little bit different to the the, the default blender because i'm using a, a fork called b4 artists um, once you've installed this uh, import field shapes script by T-Bone, you can click this uh, pane right here or a tab and it asks for one thing and that's a folder. Where is the folder with the FBX files? That's right here. doesn't matter if there's other files here. It will only look for FBX files. 
press browse and run and it just takes a few seconds and there we go now we have all the fields ready to be exported select them all and uh, export to i3d it may take a few seconds to export um, but once it's done uh, yeah it took five seconds for these four fields actually so that's not bad um, we go to GE I'm not gonna load my uh, edited height map but if you overwrite your existing one which the map in GE is actually loading uh, you can just reload the map just reload like the uh, the regular one up here in the top left corner and the height map will be reloaded you'll see that it's flattened and all that and the next step then is to import the i3d with the fields and uh, in a few seconds here you'll see that the spheres will show up in the area where they are actually located um, according to uh, the height map and all that in houdini as well so this is very much a one-to-one -one, um, situation now I get all of these fields right here um, directly on the root. So I'm going to just collect them in the transform group. And I'm going to move it uh, into, let's see, uh, gameplay. And I have this folder I, I've called field setup. Let's just move it up there. So in here, I have the necessary uh, transform groups. So I have my, uh, my, uh, spheres here made with the uh, field dimension tool and all of them have separate field uh, or sorry transform groups and then i have this template which has field angle field dimension index and name indicator index and this field grass mission toggle so what i can do then to run this group from model asher is i select the group with all the field dimensions then I select the fields transform group and at last the field template. Then I go to script, find the script and I just run through it. And in a few seconds, you will see that the field dimensions show up just like that. And yeah, I, I don't think it could be made any easier. Yes, it's sort of jumping through hoops, but imagine you have uh, 50, 100, 200 fields you, you need to do and just a push of a button and then you have all the field dimensions. That's truly a gem. Good luck.